Hello, I'm Jeanette Shablo. It's a pleasure to be able to be speaking through you through technology. It's very, very exciting. Well, let's see, I have some titles of holistic health practitioner, massage therapist, and hypnotherapist, and sound healer, and it just seems to be a wonderful, wonderful adventure. I've been very lucky to study for 25 years, and I'm never going to stop because I love it anything having to do with the healing arts. And not only from the traditional, but the very, very non-traditional. I just love all of it. It's such a big body of knowledge and wisdom um, for me to explore and to share. Because each one of you has a specific key that unlocks the healing energy. So if I can have as many keys as possible, then hopefully I can increase that chance of unlocking the healing energy that brings you to states of mind that are pretty wonderful, really, really wonderful, where most of us want to be. Levels of happiness, high levels of happiness. So how did I get here from there? Well, guess what? If you think you're a mess, you had some competition here. <laughs> I was well over 100 pounds overweight. I smoked five packs of cigarettes a day. How did I do that back then? Because you were allowed to smoke in your workplace at that time. Can you believe that? That they allowed you to do that? It's unheard of these days. I did drugs. I did alcohol. I was in an unhappy relationship that was violent. I was very, very unhappy. Very, very unhappy. A very difficult place. A lot of suffering. I even had the states of mind that I would drive around a corner and think, I'm going to be in an accident. That fatalistic thinking. Oh yeah, like I said, if you think the times are tough for you, you had some competition. <laughs> I was pretty well in the dumps. And then all of a sudden, a miracle happened. This is what you can count on. You can count on a very spiritual teaching called impermanence. It's said in many different cultures and many different religions. In our Western culture, one of the most famous one is this too shall pass. Known in the Buddhist tradition as impermanence. Because change is what it's all about. And even if you're in horrific times in this lifetime, 50, 60, 70 or more years, which most of us aren't, to be honest with you, in my personal experience, but even if we are, there is a chance for change. And a miracle can happen, and they do happen all the time. I see them every day with people that I work with and in my own personal life. Guess what spurred that change? A crisis. You're saying, what are you talking about? Your life was total chaos and crisis. No, it took a crisis to change that. And what was that crisis? That was a very personal crisis in my family that broke my bubble, that broke my bubble that all my troubles were outside of me, that if things had been different, I'd be happier. If I could change things, if people and things outside of me would change, then I could really, really be happy. Not true. Not true. This little illusion, this little inside game that I was playing got busted, and it hurt because I had developed my whole identity around this little game, these little belief systems that I had that I felt comfortable with. That's right. We stay in suffering because it's comfortable. A lot of us do. There's a level of comfort. There's something to be gained. I have never, ever in 25 years of experience ever not found some gain in the most dysfunctional, even heinous behavior. They got something out of it. Because to be honest with you, we're built for pleasure. You start studying scientists like Candace Pert, they show that we are wired for pleasure and for desire and to have things, those type of things. So what's your drug of choice? It can be anything. This bench could become my drug of choice, by God. <laughs> 
It's unbelievable, amazing, the things that I've seen that have been drugs of choice. Of course, you know, we see shopping and smoking and sex and drugs and what have you. You know, there we have a, a prevalence of that in our society. But what's the bottom line behind that? We're all trying to be happy, right? but nothing outside of yourself can bring happiness. And I tried them all, let me tell you, all that were available to, be to me. <laughs> I gave every bit of them a go. And all of a sudden, my bubble was bursted and I had to completely dissolve into emptiness and be reborn because that is the true nature of things. That you can count on, that I can guarantee you, that I can hold true with. The true nature of things is impermanence and in, ch in change. And sometimes those crises are the greatest gifts of all. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with in the 12-step program, and I've also been and studied the 12-step program. Um, that was a huge gift for me, that my alcoholism, my addiction, was the greatest thing that happened to me. And why can it be the greatest thing that happened to me? I'm gonna give you a 25 year later how it can transform into something unbelievably amazing and meaningful. Because it allows me to be humbled into the human experience that I don't know one person alive, no matter how fortunate, and I have worked with the rich and famous. Everyone suffers at some time or another. That is the human experience, the suffering that goes on. But we can also transcend that suffering and still be in the human experience and that we can have a meaningful life that benefits others. Very deep spiritual principle that's been said throughout the ages through great sages and masters and prophets of religions and cultures that have made a difference. I could name off countless of them, but you all have your own personal connections with them. The greatest happiness comes from service. And this feels like a level of service that's really fun. Sometimes the level of service wasn't that fun. So I said, oh, I guess I'm not done. I gotta turn my level of service into fun, into passion, into joy, into aliveness. I came from a really, really, really tough place to be in with a tremendous amount of suffering. And I daily experience high levels of joy now high levels, I'll even say the word ecstasy. Not the drug, but the feeling. The feeling that comes from inside, that manifests externally. And really, really enjoy my life. I mean, every day isn't, you know, at Disneyland and great and what have you, but even those moments are precious. Because the yin yang, the sun, the moon, the black, the white, all these so-called differences are not separate from each other. And when they're together, and they're honored together in their complete different aspects, but together, that is a meaningful life. That is a really, really precious experience that you get to have.